What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make sure only the correct user can delete an event for our app with Django and Python. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at making sure the right user can delete an event. So as we have it set up right now, I'm logged in as Bob. And as Bob, I can only delete or update Bob's events. You can see there's no buttons for events that aren't Bob. And that's great, but we can still actually delete an event. So if we hover the mouse over our delete event button, in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see the URL. So if I copy this and then come up here and paste it in, I could go to this URL and delete this event. And that's fine because this is my event. This is Bob's event. But if I just came up here and started guessing numbers, for instance, 10, this one right here happens to be 10. So if I, I go like this, we want this to pop up and say, oh, you're not authorized to do that. Right now, it's not set up to do that. It would just delete that event. So that's what we want to fix in this video. So let's head back over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Django videos in this series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So let's head over to our views.py file, and I'm just going to search for delete. And we can see delete venue and delete event. In this video, we're just going to deal with the delete event. And you can see what we're doing is whenever somebody clicks one of those buttons, it fires this function. It looks up the event using the ID that we pass. Remember, that's whatever this number is here in the URL. It gets passed in. We use that ID to look up the event, and then we delete it. And that works fine. But like I said, anybody can type in that URL, guess an event number, and delete a thing. So we can't have that. So if we head over to our models.py file and look at our events, we remember we've got a manager and the manager is like the owner of the event. He or she is the person that created the event. They can update the event and we only want them to be able to delete the event. So we know who the key person is here. It's the manager. And from other videos, we know if we head back over here that we can use this request to call request.user to see who the logged in user is at the moment. So we know who owns the event and we know who's logged in. All we have to do is run an if statement to see if these two equal. If they do, go ahead and let them delete it. If they don't, don't delete it. So let's just do that real quick, super easy. So here we're looking up the event so we know who the event is. So once we have the event, we can call event.manager and that will call whoever that event's manager is, right? And we also know that it's the request.user is the person that's logged in. So we could just do an if statement. And then inside of here, we can run this else do something else. So actually let's copy this too. All right. So what else do we want to happen? I don't know. Let's give a little message here. So I don't think we've actually done messages in this view. We did it in the members view, but let's see from Django contrib. I don't see it anywhere. So if we head over to, let's see our members section and look at that views.py file, we have this thing right here, django.contrib import messages. So I'm going to copy this and bring it over here and bop it into this view. So now we can use these messages, right? So let's go back down here and we could just call messages.success and then pass in the request. And then we want to say what event deleted, something like that, <laughs> right? So that's pretty easy. And then otherwise, if these two don't equal, if the request, if the logged in user does not equal the event manager, let's throw up another message that says what? Something like you aren't authorized to delete this event, something like that. And then redirect back to that page again. So that's kind of all there is to it. So let's go ahead and save this, head back over here. Now I'm going to log in as admin and look at our events. And you'll see I've off camera, I created two events, test one and test two. So let's go ahead and try test one here. This was created by the admin. So if we click this, it should work. We should get a little message that says deleted successfully. So let's click it, event deleted. Okay, so that looks good. And if we look at our event list, test one is no longer there. It's not hiding at the bottom or anything. Okay, so that seems to work. So now let's log out and log back in as somebody else, for instance, Bob. Now let's go to our events page and we can see test two is there. The buttons aren't there, so I can't click to delete it, but I happen to know that the URL for this event, test two, is this. 
localhost slash delete underscore event slash nine. Now, I know that because I looked at it earlier when we were logged in, but if you didn't know that, you could just guess, right? You could be some crazy person just trying to guess things. You know, you could just type in slash nine or slash 10 or slash 500 or whatever, and just keep typing those things, deleting things. And we don't want that. So let's go ahead and run this. This shouldn't work now, hopefully, if we've done this right. Uh-oh, you, are, you aren't authorized to delete this event. And test two is still there. Very cool. So now let's log out and let's go back to our events as a logged out person. And we can see none of the events have buttons because we're logged out. But still, let's again try that same URL as a logged out person. Ah, you aren't authorized to delete this event. Test two is still there and everything seems to work. So super fast, super easy way to make sure only the correct logged in user who owns the event can delete the event. This one little line of code right here, this little if statement, that's really all we need to do and pretty simple. So if that's all for this video, if you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off memberships to pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.